Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of Teachers College, Susan Fur. It's so great to see all of you here at Academic Festival, one of my favorite events of the year. Look around you, what a great group of people gathered. And the program of the day uh, is extraordinary, so you can understand my excitement. Today is our seventh annual academic festival, our signature homecoming event that brings together alumni, students, faculty, and staff, and friends of the college. I'm particularly pleased that once again, this event coincides with Admitted Students Weekend. It's, future, it's wonderful to welcome future scholars and leaders and give them the chance to meet and talk with our fantastic alumni, students, and faculty. I know this will be a wonderful and inspiring day. Could I see a show of hands? I can barely see. Of admitted students? Oh, yeah, you're all in the balcony down here. Great. Well, this will be the icing on the cake that convinces you to come to TC. Uh, the quest to always improve our knowledge and better understand and meet the challenges of the day began with the founding of the college. We would not be at this extraordinary moment in our history without the dedicated scholars and educators who led us to this day, the luminaries on whose shoulders we stand. I want to take a moment to remember the great alumni, students, faculty, trustees, staff, and community members no longer with us. This year, we lost three TC faculty legends, Maxine Green, George Bond, and Jack Mesereau. Each was an incredible force in their field of study and practice and touched so many lives and generations of students. Some of Jack's students will lead a session later looking at his legacy. In a moment, we'll have the chance to listen to the words and recall the wisdom of these three leaders. And then, as we hear the music of the newly formed TC Choir, let us reflect upon these TC icons and all those who have given us so much and inspire us to continue the work. I believe social change takes place in a variety of different uh, ways. I think it can take place in a family, it can take place in a community, it can take place in a workplace, it can take place in a public sphere. And you can have learning in all of those places, transformative learning, where people are becoming emancipated from old ways of thinking and old frames of reference, and they can make change happen. And I really believe that when people are freed from a lot of the kinds of, of cultural uh, meaning perspectives, the kinds of frames of reference, un the unexamined frames of reference that they bring to their, to the way that they learn, I think that when they're freed from that, that they'll do the right thing, that they'll want the kind of world that you and I want, uh, or that any other uh, educator probably wants. Any student on a train must do whatever they want. The only criteria that I have is they must do it well, up to the standard that we expect. So I do not want replicas of me. That defeats the nature of the academy. I want them to explore and to build upon a general base of ideas and to contribute to the expansion of human knowledge, to the discovery of the unknown, to acquire knowledge but not to be a, an imitation of myself. You, that's the end of the game if they do it. I do not want disciples, and no one trained in the academy should be. They must develop their own intellectual powers you, and skills and understanding. You, so that, uh, uh, do I have any disciples? No, I don't want them. You, other people may, yeah, I don't want them. I just want them to do what they do and to do it well. Yeah. Uh, and there are some who have done that, and I am quite pleased. I'm interested in aesthetics and aesthetic education because I'm interested in what happens between you or me and the wall where the Monet hangs. The work of art only becomes a work of art 
when you experience it in a certain way. I desire to be nudged into a kind of wide awakeness. What I'm most afraid of in the world is numbness, is not feeling anything, you know, or what Dewey called the anesthetic, the, uh, which is opposed to the aesthetic. We all go looking for the truth. We need the truth. We need something to stand on. But I think the reason teaching is so fascinating today is because of multiplicity, is because the object is not to answer but to engage the student in the search. That's what you do, that's what you do. And to empower the child to search for meaning. This year's academic festival, three words guide us, ignite, inspire, and innovate. By the end of the day, we will have fed our collective passion for learning and better understand the excitement and, and enthusiasm that run through TC's classrooms and corridors, where the impossible is made possible. I encourage everyone today to take advantage of the rich selection of sessions showcasing the work of our alumni, world-class faculty, and dedicated students. Today, we enthusiastically welcome our alumni. They represent an incredible cross-section of geography and accomplishment, 90,000 strong. I wish they were all here um, today. Their stories paint a vibrant picture of TC's influence and place in the world. We're especially honored this year to welcome alumni marking the 50th anniversary of their graduation. Could I see a show of hands from any 50 year? Alumni? Yay! Oh, congratulations. Of course, congratulations. Thank you. Um, they and more of their classmates will also walk as part of the procession at the TC Convocation in May. I want to give special thanks to our dedicated Alumni Council. They did so much to make today successful. Alumni are important to everything we do. They are our best ambassadors and have been instrumental in getting us closer to our ambitious $300 million campaign, Where the Future Comes First, which makes so much possible at TC. The largest such effort for a graduate school of education, this campaign comes at a pivotal moment in our history. Less than two years in to the public phase, and we're close to reaching the $200 million mark. Students are our number one campaign priority. TC's future depends on attracting the best and brightest to the college, like the current and admitted students here today. We're committed to supporting their educations and encouraging their careers in public service. You'll understand why when you meet and hear from our students throughout the day. 
Later, in Zankel Hall, you will have the chance to interact with some of our students at a reception for the poster session of student research. Come and see where TC is heading, thanks to the great minds at work today. And if you want to meet our youngest future students, stop by Kids Camp, <laughs> Academic Festival's first all-day camp for children of all ages. I, actually, I'm planning to go um, <laughs> at our Hollingworth Center. Among the many fun activities, kids will be building a replica of Zankel Hall throughout the day. And if construction goes as planned, there'll be a flag raising event in Everett Lounge at 5 p.m. As you can tell by now, I'm very proud of our alumni. Their impact is evident across the many fields they touch. In fact, wherever people are working to build a better future, you'll find a TC graduate. Teachers, artists, scholars, entrepreneurs, public servants, they're all driven by a passion to create a smarter, healthier, more just, and prosperous world for all.